In this video, I'll be showing two examples, one on the calculation of a portfolio's time-weighted return using the modified dates method, and in another example, we will calculate the portfolio's true time-weighted return. For this example, we'll be using this portfolio with a beginning market value of $300,000 on the 1st of March and an ending market value of $327,624 on 31st March. On the 5th of March, there is an external cash flow of $20,000, which is a cash inflow. And on the 16th of March, there is a cash outflow of $40,000. Uh, we also have the ending market value after cash flow on the 5th of March and 16th of March. Okay, but we won't be needing this until we calculate the true time-weighted return. Now, let's first calculate the return using the modified dates method. So, for the formula, for the modified dates method, let's just write it down here. Okay, so you will need to take the change in the market value at the end and the beginning of the month for March. Okay, and then we will minus the total cash flow. Okay, and then we will divide by the initial value of the portfolio at the beginning of the month. And then we will plus the weighted cash flow. Okay, now, how do we calculate the weightage in this case? There are two cash flows. Okay, so what we'll do is you'll just take uh, from 5th March, okay, uh, you will just measure the weightage in terms of uh, the length of time that the cash flow has been in the portfolio until the end of the month. Okay, so from 5th March to 31st March, okay, that would be a total of 26 days. Okay, so that would be 26 days over the entire month, which is 31 days. Okay, so that's the weight for uh, the 20,000 cash flow. And then uh, for the second cash flow, which is from 16 March to 31st March, okay, the cash outflow, will, the cash will be out of the portfolio for 15 days. Okay, so the weight will be 15 over 31. All right, so with that, we are done. We can substitute the numbers in. So the difference between the ending and the beginning market value here is based on, okay, uh, 327,624 minus the beginning value, 300,000. Okay, and then we just minus the external cash flows here. So I'll minus 20,000. Okay, and then uh, we'll minus uh, negative 40,000. Take note that the weights are not applied to the external cash flows in the numerator. Okay, and then we divide by the initial value, which is uh, 300,000 here. Okay, and then we will plus, okay, then we have the ex, uh, the weighted cash flows. So for $20,000, okay, that we'll apply the weight of 26 over 31. Okay, so that'd be 26 over 31 multiplied by uh, $20,000. Okay, and then we'll plus uh, for the outflow of 40,000, there will be a weight of uh, 15 over 31. So that'd be negative 40,000 there. Okay, and then we can proceed to calculate the numbers. So of course, uh, in the exam, uh, you'll be uh, given a, a bot to, to write your answer. But of course, if you know how to use the store function in the calculator, then your workings will be more efficient. Right, so in the financial calculator, let's say if we, if we start off by calculating the numerator, so we'll take 327, uh, 624 minus 300,000, okay, and then we minus 20,000, and we minus negative uh, 40,000, okay, this, don't forget a negative here, so that will give us uh, 47,624, I'll save this, I'll, I'll press store 1, okay, so let me write this down here, so this is 47,624. Okay, and then uh, we'll calculate the denominator. Now what I'll do is I'll start calculating from the weighted cash flows. So I'll take 26 times uh, 20,000. Then I'll plus 15 times negative uh, 40,000. Okay, once I get the total, that's uh, the weighted uh, sum is 80,000 with a negative sign. And then I'll divide by 31 days. And then I'll plus 300,000. Okay, and that will be the denominator. So I'll, I'll store this as number 2 just in case. Now, of course, uh, the easy way here, of course, uh, we can just press the inverse button and then we can multiply by the numerator. I will come to that shortly. So this is uh, 297419.3548. Uh, so what I can do here is I can press 1 over x, okay, and then we multiply by the numerator, which is recall 1, and we will get the time-weighted return using the modified dates method. So in percentage, that would be 16.01%. Okay, so that will be our answer. Okay, so this would be 16.01%. Uh, 
Now on to example two, let's say if you want to calculate the portfolio's true time-weighted rate of return, then we will need to calculate the sub-period return, okay, every time there is an external cash flow. So in this case, uh, we will have to recalculate the return, okay, from 1st March to 5th of March, okay, because there is an external cash flow on the 5th of March here. And uh, this ending market value of 344000 is after the cash flow. So we will have to adjust, okay, for all these external cash flows. So we'll have a return, sub-period return 1 here, and this is sub-period return 2, okay, because of the cash outflow of 40000 And then after that, we will need to calculate the sub-period return 3. Okay, now for sub period return one, uh, from three hundred thousand to three hundred and forty four thousand. Okay, so we will take three hundred and forty four thousand, but we will have to remove the external cash flow of twenty thousand here. Okay, because uh, without the cash flow, okay, the return is or the value of the fund is actually just three hundred and twenty four thousand dollars. Okay, so that is uh, the manager's uh, performance. So we will then divide by three hundred thousand. Alright, so if you calculate this, uh, you will get uh, 8%. And then uh, for sub-period return 2, so from period 2 onwards, uh, you will start off with 344000 and you will end up with 321200 but this is after the withdrawal of uh, for $40,000. So we'll take uh, 321200 uh, and then we'll minus negative 40000 We are removing okay, the, the, uh, the external cash flow here. And then we compare it versus the previous period's uh, market value, okay, over the previous period's um, ending market value. All right, so that would give us uh, five percent. And then for the last uh, sub period, okay, so we'll take three hundred and twenty-seven thousand six hundred and twenty-four minus three hundred and twenty-one thousand two hundred over three hundred and twenty-one thousand two hundred. Just take the previous period value, and then uh, that would give us two percent. So, uh, what is a time-weighted return for March? So, you will just take time-weighted return is equals to 1 plus uh, 0 0.08, 8%, uh, multiply by 1 plus uh, 5%, 0 0.05, and then multiply by 1 plus 2%, and then we minus 1. Okay, so this will give us about 15.67%. So, this is the time-weighted return for the month of March.